Hey there. So my next guest started out with a sales background. He did that for 10 years. And then it dawned on him that he might actually have a mission in the esports space to watch out for the little guy. And so this was a fun conversation because he didn't necessarily want to focus on just the tippy top people. He, re he saw the, the rest of the iceberg and he's like, this is where I really need to focus my attention. So this was a great conversation. I know you're all going to love it. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Gamerpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. Today, I have a very special guest with us. I have Chase Peterson. Hey there, Chase. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? Well, it's a beautiful sunny day in Las Vegas. How about yourself? It is dark as night here in Atlanta. It is 9 p.m. Well, I'm glad you could join us. All right. So, Chase, I like getting the show started just right into it. So why don't you begin by just telling us a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, so uh, my name is Chase Peterson. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Grew up here in the area. Uh, business professional uh, in sales and marketing for the last 10 years. Uh, kind of transitioned here into the esports gaming industry, uh, 2017, 2018, uh, officially. And, um, you know, big, big uh, hobbyist gamer. Don't really get a lot of time to play anymore, but, uh, you know, I've been around it for long enough now, a decade. A uh, couple of favorite games, Halo, uh, Halo 2, Modern Warfare, you know, just the classics uh, all the way back to, you know, the, the Sega and uh, Nintendo days. Those are definitely uh, close to my heart. But um, outside of that, uh, the athlete on the side, play soccer in my free time, a big saltwater fish tank nerd and really just... Um, trying to make a difference in this industry with uh with premiere so very cool all right we got a lot to talk about then before we do that i start every interview with a single question so i'm going to ask you just like i ask everybody else on a scale of one to ten ten being high how weird are you chase i feel like i'm not that weird no uh, Somewhere in the middle, six, maybe. I, I like that answer. All right, we'll roll with that. Pretty, pretty average person, nothing uh, nothing too crazy. I don't have any outrageous hobbies or anything like that. <laughs> For sure, that's that's my go-to answer too, when people turn it back on me. Okay, uh, now this is the Gamer Panure Podcast, so I do need your gaming cred. When did you first start playing video games? When did I first start playing video games? Uh, I think the first memory that I had playing video games was um, PlayStation 1. Uh, we were playing, uh, I don't even remember what that's called now, uh, the little bear band, no, not banjo. They remade it on PS4 now, what is it called? I'm not even sure what it's called anymore. It's all good. <laughs> PlayStation 1? For sure. Um, started on PlayStation 1, and I'm assuming you continued playing other games growing up. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, we, we bought the, uh, you know, the N64 and all the games that came out on that and Nintendo and all the Game Boys and through the generations, seen it, you know, come, come through. I love it. Okay. Now, you kind of told us some of your favorite games, but... Um, what is it that you're playing currently, if anything? I know you, you said you don't have a lot of free time. I'm right there with you. I get that. But what do you play? I think when I catch some free time to like actually play games, I'll, uh, I'll play some of the, the different games. I like to play uh, some of the older ones. I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I play uh, some Battlefront 2 occasionally with friends. And I still uh, pretty regularly play Halo. Very cool. Okay. That's probably enough uh, pure gaming for now. Let's get over to the preneur part. So you kind of gave us a little bit, you know, a little snapshot of your background, but could you kind of walk us through your professional background and how did you end up where you're at today? So professional background uh, is in sales and marketing. I've uh, been really in that space for about 10 years. Uh, I sold cars for a bit. I trained people how to annoy you in the Walmart selling you person to person. Um, I sold uh, insurance, um, and really what, where I'm at now in the, in the gaming industry was, it was purely accidental. Uh, it was where an opportunity to do something bigger than myself really met a passion of mine. 
and slowly and surely just turned into a business. Okay. Can you kind of walk us through that a little bit more? Like what was it like one particular event or was it kind of like a slow roll? Like things just kind of fell into place. Oh, it was definitely a slow roll. Um, you know, we started a little group of friends, like, uh, you know, people do when they play games, they just want to play with other people. And, uh, we started to, you know, identify ourselves as, I don't want to say like a click, but, you know, it's just a group of people that consistently played together. And, you know, we had some really awesome people. So a lot of people started to notice and wanted to join in and be a part of that. Uh, so we, you know, started to establish rules and how to join and who can join. And, you know, next thing you know, you got a hundred people in there and you're starting to think, whoa, this is becoming, you know, maybe I should take it to Facebook and start a group or, you know, we need to have something to where we can consistently keep up with each other. And, um, you know, it just continued to grow from there until people started asking, Hey, are you guys like, do you guys compete in anything? And my answer at the time was no. So they asked me why not. And, um, I couldn't give them an answer. I, I, I didn't know why not. So that was my journey, uh, within the first six months of really diving into the industry as a professional and like doing the research and doing the work that it takes to be prepared in esports. So uh, it's been a, a learning process, but after like six months of really high trial and error time, uh, you know, we finally landed on a, a good structure of what we feel like is going to shake the, you know, shake the scene and what is really going to be needed for, you know, my focus and a lot of people's focus is, you know, the next generation, uh, trying to figure out how this can be done for lots of people, not just the few that have made it very successful. Okay. Can you please speak to that a little bit more? What, what exactly is it you discovered or what, how are you different? What, how is your organization different? So uh, due to the nature of my accidental opportunity that turned into a business, uh, it gave me a different outlook, I guess, on the industry as a whole. Uh, a lot of people are now getting this professional uh, outside look into what the industry is now because of the growth in the, the recent months. A lot of people don't realize, um, you know, what what is still needed in the industry. Uh, and the way that I see it is there's still a lot of scalability that needs to happen. And for that to happen, there has to be a like a ladder you know, like a career, you have to have those checkpoints and you have to have that in place in order for this to be anything close to what we all hope it will be. Um, so I had the opportunity to start with content creators in a group and work into esports, whereas a lot of other companies now that are out there start with esports because they see that's where, you know, the marketing dollars are, that's where the, the hype is right now. And now they're working into content creators so it's given me a little bit of a different uh, viewpoint on, you know, the industry as a whole, but um, really from what I've seen is, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of, and I'm going to use it for a term that's not supposed to be derogatory and not supposed to be mean at all, but the 99 percenters, there's hundreds of thousands of people who want to do this as a career that don't know how, or are not getting the opportunity to do it as a career because they don't have the tools or connections or assets or whatever that is skills and that's primarily where we started is addressing those people and working with the top people and i don't think anybody in the industry really that i know of when i started this had that mindset at all they only wanted to work with the top tip top iceberg people and not the 99 percent below I, I absolutely understand where you're coming from. I whole, wholeheartedly understand that one. Now, what exactly is your role at your organization? So I'm the owner and founder um, of Premier. So the CEO, I guess, is the official title there. Uh, so I did start the uh, the company officially in 2020, okay. January 2020. And, and what is it you do for them as owner, founder, CEO? What is it that I don't do? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I manage day-to-day -day operations. Um, a lot of it's delegating tasks, uh, organizing with um, events with our, you know, planners, uh, helping oversee esports operations, new contract signings, sponsor negotiations. Personally, I uh, have a very uh, 
big hobby in graphic design and video editing and animation and web design. So I do all of that for the company. I run the merchandise store, uh, <laughs> the marketing. I do, I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Now, um, how have you been able to apply all of your sales background into this? Because, you know, I, I've interviewed a lot of people and by and large, most people don't really know what they're doing on the sales side. They either have to go find someone or they kind of struggle through this. Like how, how are you integrating that past part of you? Mm, I feel like I'm going to keep some of this close to chest um, just because of the nature of some of the conversations that I'm having. But I will tell you generally uh, using some of the, you know, just experiences that I've had in the past working with negotiation, um, with people sales is just, a it's a use of words and it's, a intentionality to sway conversations in a way that's favorable to whatever outcome you want. And that can be taught. It can be learned. Um, and you know, you ask a question and a lot of times I already know the answer. Uh, I think that that has been something that's been very helpful with me, but uh, I would say the overarching thing that's um, been incredibly useful is uh, understanding that in sales, uh, there is always something that you can do to provide that person with a better experience um, with, with your professionalism, with, you know, increasing their bottom line. So I feel like I know a lot of these things that, maybe somebody that doesn't have this experience uh, wouldn't understand because they haven't had to negotiate numbers with somebody. They haven't had to sell a car and understand that they have a bottom line and I have a bottom line and we have to meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, and, and having the words to uh, you know use in that conversation to help steer that conversation without sounding inexperienced, I guess maybe is the best way to go through that. Perfect. Okay. Now, um, you at the top of premiere, what makes you special or unique or different from someone else trying to start their own esports organization or just kind of gaming streaming organization? Like what, what is it? That's, you know, that's the thing about you that sets you apart. You personally, about me? Yeah, oh, you personally. Me personally, um, I think for me personally, I have, um, I have a, a little bit more compassion, I think towards the little guy, uh, towards somebody who's learning, towards someone who's new, that I think to a lot of people can be seen as a, as a weakness. Um, but I do genuinely feel like, you know, that everybody that is willing to give it a shot uh, to make a career out of something should get the chance uh, until proven otherwise. Um, and I know that the industry as a whole is it's almost like selling cars, you know, it's, you got to hit your deadlines and you got to, you got to do what you got to do and black and white. If you don't hit it, then there's no middle area. Uh, so I think that that's, that's pretty unique. I would say about my, my character. Um, personally, I, I would do anything for my guys. So. Okay. Does that put you in any awkward situations where you, you try someone out and it's, it's pretty clear that they're not going to work out. How do those conversations go? I think they can go horribly wrong or they can go, uh, you know, as planned. And I think it's just about setting the right expectation with everyone as you bring them on board, you know, you tell them, Hey, uh, you know, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we believe that you can do it if you're willing to do it. And we give them the keys and, you know, they got to, they got to drive the car themselves. Absolutely. Okay. Now you said premiere is about three years old or so. Uh, unofficially. Yes. Yes. Unofficially. Officially. We just crossed over a year, uh, two months ago. Okay. So I want you to hop in a time machine with me. All right. We're going to go back about three years in time and you're going to get to talk to little chase back then. So you get to go up to him. You get to tell him all of the ups and downs, all the good and the bad, all the things that you've learned and experienced, all the trials and challenges you've had. You get to impart all of your wisdom and knowledge that you've gained since that time to him. But if there was one thing he had to know about growing this organization, what would you tell him? <laughs> Uh, patience and research is more important than anything. You mind uh, elaborating on that a little, please? Like what you try to extrapolate that out to everybody else who's running a business too. 
Yeah, I mean, um, it's exciting when you have new things happen uh, at any scale, you know, yeah, as, you know, as an owner of a business, when you have some new opportunity, especially as like a enthusiastic idea person, you love when new things come across the table and having the mindset and the patience to prepare yourself before rolling out even minor changes or bringing on new teams or new creators or getting into a new game or negotiating with a new sponsor. Just take, take your time, think it through and try to extrapolate and forecast the next couple years of this decision instead of jumping into a, uh, that, that goes for anything, jumping into anything. Wonderful. All right. Now, Chase, I believe that we learn the most in our life from our failures, not necessarily our successes. Because when you succeed the first time you try something, you may not learn exactly what you were supposed to have done, but you just like, ah, mm-hmm. I did it. But if you fail, you got to take a look at it. You got to be able to move past it in order to move forward to succeed the next time. So I'd like to ask you, what do you consider your biggest failure in life? And what did you learn from it? Oh, in life? Uh, not being open with people, I would say is a pretty big, um, drawback. I tend to, you know, be more, um, introspective and think, think about myself and, uh, not really share a whole lot of feelings with a lot of people. And for some people, you know, shutting them out is not the right answer. So. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Kind of on the flip sure. side now, what is something that you are working to improve on yourself today? Something that I am learning to improve on, I suppose, would be um, just leading, leading better, leading people. And um, I feel, you know, you only know what you know. And the day you stop learning is, you know, the day you stop growing and I can only be as good of a leader as I know how to be. And if I'm not training myself every day, then the people behind me are only going to be as good as me. So. Wonderful. Humility suits you well, my friend. All right, Chase, this has been a fantastic interview. How do people find you? Where are you on social media, contact information, (laughs) all that, please. Yeah. So uh, if anybody has any questions about what I do or esports in general, or you just want to connect, uh, I can be found on LinkedIn at Chase Peterson. Uh, my email is chase at premieresports.org. Uh, if you want to take a look at the team, team's website is premiergg.com, or we got some really cool merchandise, premiergggmerch.com. Uh, and my personal Twitter is at underscore kick ace. Fantastic. All right. Now, as we wrap this up, do you have any final thoughts you want to share or anything I didn't ask you think we still need to cover? Mm. I think I, I tend to, uh, when I do podcasts, I, I try, I do a lot of um, like teaching podcasts. So it's very common ground here for me. I think uh, I'd like to share one last final thing for your audience. Uh, and that's if, if you have a, a dream and you want to do it and you can't stop thinking about it, do it. You won't regret it. (laughs) That's some fantastic advice. That's so true. Absolutely. All right. Chase Peterson, thank you so much. I I genuinely appreciate you coming on with me today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I was, uh, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. And for everybody else, I'm going to remind you all, don't be just a gamer, be a gamerpreneur. Mm -hmm.